Hello everyone and welcome to another Astroneer video. This time we are covering the new logic gates that can be created with the Automation 2.0 update. So this little setup here, I have five gates made up and you can see that the RTG up top is basically just to provide limitless power. Um, you can definitely do this with a small generator, medium generator, solar, wind turbine, anything like that. But just for my sake, I do have the RTG here just because I want power to continuously flow through these guys. And I don't want to have to go through any more tedious of a setup. But you can certainly use other forms of power in your own setups or any way that you have power coming to you. These switches up top represent our inputs. So for the different type of gates, some take two inputs, some take one input. Well, primarily only one takes one input, and we'll get to that. But this is where I this is where I moderate what goes into the so-called gate. And then down at the bottom we have work lights. And these work lights are just going to be de depict the output of the gate. So when the gate is in operation, if it's a one, then that's our output. If it's a zero, then we have no power coming to it. And that's kind of a, a good way to symbolize how we do those. So hopping right into it right over here, we have a not gate to our left right here. When our input is a zero, our output should be a one. When our input is a one, our output is then a zero. And this is done by just having a switch in the opposing direction. If we were to switch this back to its normal position, this would not be operating correctly. So we need to make sure that this switch is in the opposite position, and then we just detect power gained or lost, and we can switch back and forth between the two. This one is our AND gate, and an AND gate is actually very simply just two power switches put in series. So when we flip one of the switches, because it's power gained or lost, it's going to flip one of the other switches. Now this is not enough to let the power flow all the way through though. So we need to make sure that if the other switch is triggered, we still don't have enough power. It only happens when both of them are flipped. So this is the standard operation for an AND gate where the only way that our output is a one is if both of the inputs are also a one. For our OR gate, this occurs whenever we have power flowing through any of the inputs. So this is done by having a splitter, which basically can take any number of inputs if you have enough splitters. Um, but the reason that we do this this time is because we're not too worried about power thresholds anymore. In the past, we used to worry about how much power is coming through and using the appropriate amount of auto arms to disassemble it, or to dissipate it, excuse me. But this time, we only care about power or not. So if one input is on, they both turn on, and obviously if both inputs are on, we still have power coming through. This time we just have more, so 2.67 in that case, 2 in that case, so it really doesn't matter too much. Um, Essentially, we're just focusing on power coming through in the first place, not the actual number of it. This is a NAND gate. So NAND gates are very, very popular in circuits. And this one actually took a quick moment just to think through how this was going to work. But essentially on the output, the only way that this ends up turning into a zero is if both inputs are one. So you can effectively take the AND gate and then throw an inverter on the end of it. Or you could do just a much simpler method like this where you have both of the inputs cascaded together. So when one of them is on, nothing happens. Only when power, when both of these are flipped does power flow through to the power sensor. And then it obviously triggers our power switch. So again, we need to make sure our power switch is in the opposite position, which is similar to the inverter. But only when both of these are on do we indeed see that this turns off. And again, this is the standard operation for a NAND gate. Um, other than that, nothing happens when either or of these switches are triggered. This last one over here is a XOR gate. So this is also known as an XOR or an exclusive OR. This is a type of OR gate where only one of the options can be on to trigger a one. So when both of them are zero, obviously we have nothing appearing on our work light. When one of these is triggered, we flip this switch. So when one of them is triggered, we flip the switch. When one of them is triggered, we flip the switch. That's perfectly fine, that's standard OR gate. But where the XOR gate differs is when both of them are on, we trigger the switch again to turn it off. So when both of them are on, we do not have power flowing through our work light. And this is obtaining the behavior of an exclusive OR. I'm not sure how important this is gonna be used. I believe someone in my community mentioned that it would be very nice to use this as like a door if the collision were enabled for the new storage platform that came up with the Automation 2.0 update. Um, and in that case, you could flip a switch on the outside, open the door, flip a switch on the inside to close it, then when you're leaving, flip the switch again to open it and then flip it again to turn it off. So a circuit like this could be useful for more cosmetic type stuff, but we'll have to see what people can come up with with these new and improved gates. In the meantime though, I am gonna give you a practical example. If, any, if you've seen any of my previous videos like the risk computer or the circuitry guide that I made, this is a method that I used pre-automation 2.0 update to multiplex through and tell which generators are on. So for example, 
these two are both 0, 0 right now, and our 0th location is lit up. When this goes to 0, 1, then our first one, then 1, 0, then our second one, and then 1, 1 is our third one. Now, this entire setup was based on generating power, figuring out how much power we have, and then dissipating with the auto arms. Instead, we can simplify it to just this. And the operation here works pretty simply. Um, this little guy right here acts as our inverter. So we have power flowing through here because this is representing the zero. When we flip this switch, it's going to allow power to come through this power sensor, and that's going to flip this switch too. So essentially, we have now power flowing through this branch. So this is when it's a one, this is when it's a zero. It's just a very simple way to have it be like an invert um, just on the gate itself. So when this is a zero, this power sensor is triggered, and this power sensor is triggered. And what these lead to is these lead to a series of power switches over here. So all of the first power switches are handled by this RTG, and all of the second power switches are handled by this RTG. So when this one's a zero, it's going to trigger the first one, and this one's a zero, it's going to trigger the first one as well. So you'll notice that this power switch is also triggered. We can turn it off. This power switch is not, so that's why we can turn it on. But this one's also triggered. This one corresponds to the other zero possibility, and this one corresponds to the other zero possibility for the first gen for the first RTG. Um, however, because we don't have the full oper the full operation working, it doesn't come through, and we have our one one going to a power switch. And this is just to display that you can then do something with it. And the power switches aren't hooked up to anything at the moment, but they certainly could be very easily. So if we were to switch this to a one now, we would see that this would turn off, and this path now turns on because we have enabled all of the switches in that row to let power through. In this case, this one's still on because our second generator is still a zero, and this one now turned on because our first generator is now a one. So this is for zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. So if we were to flip this now to one, zero real quick, we see that our third channel now has all the power switches enabled. And then if we switch this to one, one, we see that our fourth channel now has all the power switches enabled. And this is a lot less finicky to deal with than having to go through a whole series of auto arms. And in this, it's actually more advantageous than this design because we no longer have to worry about all of the, we no longer have to worry about how much power we have. We have an RTG here, but it doesn't matter if it produces four units. If we use the generator, it doesn't matter that that produced three. All we really care about is do we have power or not, which is truly getting back to the computing form of ones and zeros. Um, so with this video, I hope that you guys get some good understanding of how these gates work and a practical example of how it significantly improves previous circuitry. So with that, I leave you guys to come up with some really cool creations. There are certainly other gates out there like the NOR gate, um, and maybe some other more complex ones, but those are circuitry pieces like a T flip flop, D flip flop, various things like that. So I'm sure people are going to be starting to create those very soon, but I wanted to get this video out there so you guys could see some of these circuitry techniques and gate ideas um, as early as possible. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Again, don't forget to either subscribe here or follow me on Twitch or Twitter. I do primarily stream on Twitch, as I have said every time. So if you want new content, try to go there first. But I certainly have been trying to post more videos here for you guys, and hopefully you certainly do appreciate it. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in any way that you feel possible. I am more than happy to answer them. But have a good rest of your day, and I hope you enjoyed the video.